Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a fresh copy of Three Sisters. It's the newest, greatest roll and write game from Motor City Gameworks and 25th Century Games. You've probably heard about this game or maybe you wanna hear what all the talk is about. Well, the days are getting longer and the weather warmer. The kids come home and tell you about companion planting. They learned it at camp. This is a growing technique used long, long ago where corn, beans, and squash grow together because they help each other out with some aspect or another. And soon you decide to go all in. You get a new shed, some flowers, a tree or two, and even a beehive. The game is played over eight rounds in which you will take a garden action and a rondelle action, then you will share a garden action and a rondelle action with everyone else, and then you will perform the event to end that round. The first round you place Farmer Edith on this spot here and then you will roll the dice. The number of dice depends on how many players you have in the game. The dice are then grouped together by numbers and then placed in ascending order clockwise from Farmer Edith. The first player will then pick a group of dice for themselves. This will dictate where they want to take their garden action and the location on the rondelle will dictate the other action that they take on their turn. The garden action consists of two choices and you will learn them well as you will be doing them a lot, twice each turn. With the garden action you can plant or you can water. When planting you will mark the bottom box of two different crops, that would be two different columns. This here is your garden and the outside edges will grow your pumpkin. And the inside will grow corn and beans together and that's why there are two columns next to each other. Again, planning is marking off the bottom box of any column in the garden section that matches the value of that die. The water action is to then mark the next empty box of every crop that has been planted in that garden section that matches the value of the die. With time, watering will mark off the most boxes, but only if you have planted enough to benefit more from that watering action. The garden crops are always filled from bottom to top, and when they get to the top, which is either four boxes high or sometimes just one high, the last box is a circle, and if you fill in that circle that you just finished, you finish that crop, which will then be harvested. Corn will give you three points at the end of the game for each one that you harvest. Beans will give you one point for each one that you completed. Pumpkins don't award points, they instead award goods, which is kept on this track here. The bonuses that these all give you are listed here in your garden, with the blue ribbon signifying points and the red box signifying goods. Now whenever you harvest two adjacent pumpkins, you will take the peroneal action shown between them. These are filled in from bottom to top as well, and when you fill in a certain box, it can give you extra actions that you take immediately. Some spaces are ongoing bonuses that take effect till the end of the game. If you complete any of these to the top, they will award you with the listed points at the end of the game. As you can see already, with just one paper out of the two, that this game is going to require some choices. Strategy will guide you and change from game to game, focusing on when you plant and water and what peroneals that you will go after. But there is more. More on this second paper. These spaces list most of the rondelle actions. Let's cover them in the order of spaces on the rondelle track as I show you them here on this second sheet. This is the plant or water action. We already pretty much covered this, but this is a plant or a water action in addition to your garden action from that die. The next action, shed time. You will fill in the next empty box of any one shed item. Each item here will give you an extra bonus, score extra points, gain goods, or a combination of those things. Again, choices and strategy for the shed. The next action, one compost and four goods. Goods are filled in from left to right, top to bottom. Whenever you fill in a star, you will gain a bonus action to do immediately. This bonus action will let you fill in the next empty box anywhere in the peronials, the apiary, the fruit, or the shed. Bonus actions can never be spent in the garden. Also, the current number of goods that you have will determine which actions you gain when you visit the farmer's market. The compost track is filled in from left to right, top to bottom. Whenever you plant or water, you can spend a compost to adjust the die value by plus or minus one so that you can target another garden section. You'll cross them off when spent on this track. 
This also can be used multiple times in a single die if you have enough compost to do so. And the values can wrap from six to one or one to six. Apiary or fruit. The apiary is filled from bottom to top and you will start with the main hive. When filled, you can then split up your actions to fill in boxes from any of the three new sections. When you fill in circles, it signifies you harvesting wax or honey and you will gain the listed bonus. The fruit section is filled in from left to right and you can fill in any empty box of any one fruit row, but some of the actions will specify toward a certain fruit. When the circles are filled in, you will gain the listed bonuses goods, points, or taking the water action. The next action, the farmer's market. When doing this action by either landing on it on this rondelle track or gaining it through a bonus, you will compare how many goods you currently have with the chart on the board. You will then gain the listed bonus action. The more goods you have, the better action you get. After each player has performed their chosen action taken in turns, the rondelle space with the lowest value die that is still on the board is performed by all players. After that, the event phase then occurs. You will visit the round tracker and that lists the event that you will do that round. Shed means you will take the shed action. Rain means you will take the water action in all zones of your garden. And the farmer's market is like I just explained above, giving you a farmer's market action. After the event is performed, that round is over and the first player token is passed to the left and the round marker moves to the next round. After eight rounds, the game ends. Players will score points for their garden. Each completed corn is three points. Each completed bean is one point. Then points are awarded according to their checked off boxes in the perennial section, the apiary, the fruit section, and the shed. The player then, with the most points, wins the game. This is a great roll and write higher type strategy game with lots of choices. I like how your choices are narrowed down on the rondelle, but players still compete with each other for actions, meaning uh, one player can take an action that I want to perform if they get it before I do. The sections on these two sheets of papers connect with each other, so you're not just playing separate games on your papers, but rather they blend together and grow together like your corn and beans. I like how the values of the dice isn't like getting that much of something, but rather it decides what section of your garden that you're going to take your garden actions in. The best part of this game is comboing your actions together well in order to fill in more and more boxes. Eight rounds doesn't seem much, but when you combo things together, you will see the fields growing like crazy, ready for harvest. It also doesn't hurt that all players take a second garden and rondelle action with the lowest die value left on the rondelle each round. And then the events also help, especially if you have lots of seed out there and it rains. If you like roll and write games and you are looking for the next step, or maybe you already took that next step and you love what you've experienced, well, then three sisters will sure get time on your table. So companion grow with your family and friends in Three Sisters by Motor City Gameworks and 25th Century Games. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.